And I'm joined now by uh, Dan Dunn. He is the co-host of Marlin Family Live, a terrific uh, Miami Marlins uh, talk show podcast. And uh, Dan, welcome to Mets Musings. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be talking uh, Marlins baseball and uh, Marlins Mets, man. Yeah, coming up, a big four-game series here in City Field. Marlins come yeah. into town uh, tomorrow evening. We're recording this a day earlier than usual. But, uh, Dan, let's start off. Uh, the Marlins haven't gotten off, uh, I think it's fair to say, to the start that they would have hoped for. They won today. Mm -hmm. So they're three and six, but uh, not exactly the way they wanted to start the season. Hey, I could agree with you 100% on on that note for sure. Uh, I said uh, kind of unlike uh, last year. Last year we got off to the really hot start at the at home, and then we had the uh, road trip where, where we were just awful. Um, so hopefully, like I said, we're kind of looking at it. You know, maybe it's the opposite way this year and. Uh, had a horrible home stand to start the season, but uh, we're going to kick some butt on the road this trip here. Well, we hope it starts four days from now when you kick some butt <laughs> on the road. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, so you've uh, you've had some injuries as well. Uh, we were just just chatting before we went on the air, and uh, uh, David Wright went down for the Mets, and and. You guys had some big injuries as well. You lost uh, Henderson Alvarez just the other night. Just the other night, yeah. Henderson Alvarez had a little uh, shoulder inflammation. It, and uh, he had a little bit of uh, a pain in his elbow, which uh, initiated the uh, the doctor visit and uh, had an MRI done. Um I, I still haven't found out too much information on that, but... Uh, Hopefully it's not completely horrible. I haven't heard the news yet, so uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and uh, hoping the best for us on that. And a couple of freak injuries with two guys breaking uh, uh, breaking fingers. What's up with that? That I mean, the most obscure things you ever the Kelly the Kelly one when uh, the ball bounced up and split the finger. It just just horrible i i've seen finger injuries and uh oh this this is enough to make your stomach turn just like you said just a, a freak uh injury the ball hits you right in the right spot and and you're done for for a little bit so uh yeah a couple freak injuries uh kelly like i said was a uh, a guy that we were going to use uh you know sporadically here and there and off the bench so uh and plenty of other options for the Marlins to go with. Uh, they brought Brignick back up. Uh, we, we kind of, uh, I know me and my uh, host, uh, other host, Andy, uh, we, uh, we we talked about maybe Brignick should have been starting the season with the Marlins over Kelly. Um, so I, I don't see too much of a, a, a switch over in that. Um, it is kind of sad to lose our, our, our backup catcher, Mathis. I mean, he's such a, a great defensive catcher for us. Uh but uh, we do get to see the new guy, JT Rulamuto. Uh He's supposed to be the uh, future for the Miami Marlins. Uh, I got to know him very well up here in Jacksonville. Uh, I said I do get to cover the Jacksonville Sun. Mm -hmm. So I uh, spent a lot of time uh, with, with JT over the past two years, and it's a, a real great guy. So, uh, but, hey, every injury brings a chance of seeing uh, the next impossible great uh, future for the Miami Marlins. So, uh and with every injury, uh, you know, there's optimism. So uh, I, I, I don't see anything that uh, completely uh, killed us this season. And like I said we still get uh, an ace back uh, mid-season and in, in, uh, Jose Fernandez. And how is uh, Jose Fernandez's re rehab going so far? It seems to be, uh, from all what I've read, he's been doing quite well. Oh, everything that we've been getting back are all positive signs. Um, the the one the probably our most promising promise on that we've seen was to start the year they only put him on the 15 day disabled list. Mm -hmm. So that you know that tells me they didn't want to lock him down for 60 days or for the 45 days. So we might be seeing Jose Fernandez pretty soon. Uh, I said I, I don't expect it next week or anything, but uh, definitely uh, back on track and uh, looking to see Jose uh, you know end of May first part of June. 
And, of course, you may get to see, uh, I haven't looked at the pitching probabilities yet, but you may get to see our uh, returning ace from uh, Tommy John surgery, and that is uh, Matt Harvey, who pitched in one of the wackiest games I've ever seen last night. But uh, uh, if, uh, if I'm correct, he may pitch Sunday, so you may get to see him against the Marlins in the final game. We're hoping. We're hoping no. We're hoping to miss him on this trip. Uh, that's what I'm going for. Uh, but uh, I said uh, it was great to see uh, Matt Harvey come back and uh, be as uh, dominant as he was in spring and uh, opening day. I believe he had a really great start on opening day too, if I remember mm-hmm. right. Um, so I, I, it's, it's really great to see, and you know, it's great signs for us as well that you know Jose Fernandez probably come back just as well. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you're going to see Harvey against Kohler on uh, Sunday. Mm. Ah, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah. the, big, the big salad versus Harvey, uh, uh, it'll be an interesting matchup. And uh, I, I said uh, the one that we're kind of waiting to see is, uh, you know, what happens with uh, um, with David Phelps. Does he come back and take the start for Henderson Alvarez, which is what the reports are that it's going to be. Um, but, uh, you know, that uh, new guy that we got to see a, a, for a second last night, and Jose Urena, um, you know, came up and uh, made his made MLB debut last night, and he's actually a very good starter um, in the Marlins system. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, hopefully we get to see a start from our young rookie uh, Jose Urena, and uh, I said uh, you can see what the future of the Marlins pitching staff will look like. And uh, they have a lot of good young players uh, as well as young mm-hmm. pitchers and and made some moves over the winter. And uh, how are they working out? I know Dan Harron didn't really want to come here uh, and then decided to come. And he's been pitching pretty well for you guys so far. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I, I was one of the uh, people who really didn't, didn't carry the way what happened with Dan Harron, especially since he came out and said, well, I don't want to move across the – across this uh, country, and I want to stay where I want to stay. I'm like, well, what do you do? We really don't need you then. But uh, since he has come, he's put in 100% effort, and uh, I said, looked really great in spring for us. And uh, so far, not so, uh, uh, you know, I, I have no complaints of what I've seen so far out of here in the season. So uh, I'm, uh, I have no complaints there. And uh, I said, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, Matt Latos uh, had a horrible start his opening day, a uh, new addition, and I said came back yesterday, had a really good start against the, the Braves. So, uh, I, you know, it's some positive signs. Uh, I said the, the pieces, you know, man, fluke, flukes happen. Uh, you know, one game's here, one game's there, and uh, hopefully it was the one bad game from Matt Latos at the start of the year. And, of course, you added a new second baseman with uh, D. Mm-hmm. Gordon coming from the Dodgers, and he's off to a really good start. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, with the bat, uh, much above my expectations. Uh, uh, last I checked, uh, way up over the top of 300 on, with his batting average on the season. Um, he gets on base. He's going to steal some bags and uh, cause some mischief on the bases. So, uh uh, very, very happy with what I've seen out of D. Gordon so far this year, and uh, defense hasn't been bad for him either. And he, he's uh, – how old is he, like 31? Is he in that range or – Oh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't want to say he's that old. I want to say um, more closer to the higher 20s. I mean, he's been around a while, but, uh, you know, I think he's a young veteran, as you would say. Right, right. He's he's only been in the league, I believe, four years, four or five years. And uh, so, it, like I said, he's still developing and still learning the game, just like uh, almost every uh, young, young person is. And uh, I said, uh, he's just going to get better with age and uh, smarter on the base pass. And uh, I said, w- what I've seen out of him defensively uh, – much improved, uh, I think, because our, our second base was a, uh, uh, what would you want to call it, a, a rotating door yeah, last year and the past couple of years and just people going in and out every, in and out every other day. So uh, it's good to see that they got a, a permanent fixture at second base. And uh, like I said, uh, what I've seen with the bat, what I've seen with the glove, all positive signs so far for D Gordon. 
And, of course, you added also another outfielder, Ichiro Suzuki. Uh, what kind of start is he off to in, in, I would imagine, he's in limited action? Yes, limited action, but uh, it's what we've seen so far out of him, uh, I, I'm impressed with. Uh, it says just that they went out and got a fourth outfielder to the uh, level of an Ichiro. I mean, he's still great defensively. He's with the bat. He's you know he's getting on base all the time. Uh, it says he can come up in a valuable situation for you and be a clutch hitter off the bench. Uh, the picking up of each each row was uh, huge for the Miami Marlins this off season. And of course, the uh, a big question uh, was uh, Gene Carlos Stanton how he's going to come back uh, after being hit last season in the face, and mm-hmm. he's gotten off to a bit of a slow start. Uh, he's got he's still leading the team in RBIs, but. Uh, uh, again, not the start he had hoped for, I don't think, after signing that huge contract. Yeah, and some of it might be he's trying to put a little bit too much pressure on himself. Uh, we've seen that over and over again with these guys who sign the big contract, especially in their first year after signing the contract. They want to go out and show everybody that this is the reason why I'm worth all this. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. they've had struggles. So maybe it's something in his head right now. He just needs to get back, relax. Um, but, and, and something I did notice uh, between yesterday and, and today's game, uh, he, he was messing with the uh, face plate that he's been wearing, taking it on, taking it off. So I think maybe he's still trying to adjust um, to uh, getting comfortable in the box. So uh, uh, I said that the, the power is going to come, the numbers are going to come with Stanton, and uh, so I'm not too worried about him. Yeah, it seems whenever these guys sign a big contract, they always uh, seem to struggle a bit. And like you say, I think they put a little too much pressure on. And uh, I expect that uh, he'll he'll relax and, and uh, wreak havoc on the rest of baseball. I mean, anybody that's been a baseball fan for many, many years knows this game is a complete mental head case game. And uh, if you're thinking too much, it's going to eat you alive. And another acquisition that the uh, uh, Marlins made over the winter was getting Michael Morse, and uh, he's been off to a pretty decent start as well, playing first base. Yes, uh, he's got a little bit, I said, uh, high strikeouts. That's that's the one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit, Um, especially if you're protecting Stanton. If you got a high strikeout guy behind him, it's a little rough because, you know, I'll take a chance of striking out more than, you know, going after Stanton and maybe missing a pitch. Uh, so I, I don't – I'm not too high on more so far. But, uh, yes, uh, so he, he's gotten out. He's been getting hits. Uh, I, I just uh, wish the strikeouts would come down a little bit. I, I think that does hurt uh, having this, the high strikeout ratio. And since – uh, I believe the Braves series, uh, when we hit the road, they have put Prado in between Stanton and Morris, and that seems to be helping out a little bit. Um, so I said, that's that, so that's the one thing that concerns me with uh, Morris is just the high sti- strikeout rate. Yeah, and he's always been that way, and he he, he mm-hmm. almost kind of reminds me of uh, Dave Kingman in a way. You know, he's either going to hit the ball a mile and a half or strike out. So uh, mm-hmm. you kind of know what you're going to get with him. But uh, uh, you know, he he's he's a, when he makes contact, boy, that ball goes. Yeah, yes, sir, it does. And uh, I said, especially with Marlins Park, big old gaps. Uh, I said, I, I just wish he would. Uh, you know, try to shorten the swing up a little <laughs> bit and uh, take what he can get and be more protection for Stanton. But I think the the moving of Prado up in between, the, the more contact hitter, you still got to worry about the big power bat with Morris coming up after that. So uh, I, I, I do like seeing the little bit of split up that they've done with uh, Morris and Prado. Like the, the other acquisition that we mm-hmm. haven't talked about yet. I said the Marlins has made so many acquisitions this, right. this uh, offseason, basically a a whole new infield to uh, go with the uh, youngest and best MLB outfield we had. Right, and and speaking of that outfield, I remember a couple of years ago Stanton had gotten hurt, and uh, 
They called up a young guy, and he absolutely killed the Mets in a series. There, he was making catches, diving all over the place, getting hits, and that was Ozuna. And I really mm-hmm. liked that kid a couple of years ago when he first came up, and uh, he's holding down center field. What kind of start is he off to? A little bit of a slow start so far this season, but uh, so he's one of my guys that I think could uh, really explode this season. Um, especially like so if Morris gets hot and Stanton gets hot, um, people are going to relax and they're not going to be thinking about Azuna as much. Uh, I like said so his power will come around, and uh, I said so I really like I really love Ozuna. I said uh, I know all Mets fans remember the eighth and ninth inning of games last year that he uh, was in right field and just ended the game basically on you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so I so said he is a. Uh, He's a terrific young outfielder. Uh, it's a, just a little off to a slow start this season, but uh, everybody kind of was at the uh, you know middle and back end of the order. So uh, I think it will uh, come around, and uh, he's a, definitely a streaker hitter. So once he gets going, it's going to go. Well, it's a funny thing uh, how you said uh, that guys were off to slow starts, and, and uh, I was discussing this the other day, and, and just – when you look at the NL East, it seems that a lot of the teams that were picked to contend, uh, talking actually just one team, really, the Nationals, are off mm-hmm. to a terrible start. And uh, I had said to somebody, uh, my buddy Rich Baxter, who uh, does a Phillies uh, talk podcast uh-huh. and and uh, he co-hosts a show with me called MLB this week uh, we would discuss and I said now's the time to play the Nationals because they've got a bunch of guys hurt and you yeah. want to play them early in the season then when they're hurt they're down because uh, uh, it was a lot of talk in New York because the Mets have to play in the division a lot in April and they had the Nationals uh, like six or eight games we have to play them and we only played three so far but I said now is the time to play them because they're down, and uh, yeah, exactly. you know, you you build up your numbers now. Try to build them up because they might come back and bite you later in the season. But uh, uh, if the Marlins uh, are playing the Nationals now, is the time to get them because they're not playing well, even though they won today. But uh, so did the Marlins. So maybe teams are starting to straighten themselves out. You know, it's been a uh, kind of a crazy first week where uh, if you look throughout mm-hmm. baseball. Uh, a lot of the teams you thought that were going to be better are are struggling so far. Yeah, uh, so this, just looking at the NL East rankings, and it's a uh, completely flip flop yeah. from uh, <laughs> the way ninety nine point nine percent of people pick. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, and the Phillies and the the Mets and the Braves up top, and the Marlins and Nationals at the bottom. Um, I, I don't see that being uh, that way all year long. Um, I think the Phillies just kind of got off to one of them super hot starts, and uh, I think I think they will eventually go back down. Uh, so that age and talent level just not there with the Phillies this year. Right. Um, I said the Mets were were the one team I was kind of concerned about this season, um, especially with that young pitching. Uh, you know, Harvey and uh, uh, that Gee last year was just you know tremendous last season. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. Mets were the one I was uh, concerned we're going to be uh, fighting the Marlins uh, tooth and nail, um, you know, coming down the stretch. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it all sells out. But uh, yeah, like you said, this, this start of the season has been completely upside down in the NL East. Yeah, it, it's just wacky. But uh, as you say, we'll see how it all shakes out. And one guy we didn't talk about, and another good. Solid young player that you have is Christian Yelich out in left field, and uh, how is he he playing so far? Oh, off to a tremendous start. Um, I believe his average is up over three hundred. That has been the one bright spot on our offense is that our front of my our front of our order with Gordon and Yelich have been getting on base. Um, so I said once the middle of the order and uh, you know the end of the order kind of snap out of their streak, their cold streaks. The offense is gonna gonna shine, especially with them with uh, Yelich and Gord getting on base. Um, everybody saw the tremendous catch, uh, I believe, number six in Sports Center top ten just the other night, um, going back on the ball, uh, Gold Glove winner. Um, doesn't have uh, the greatest arm out there in the outfield, but you know if you play the position smartly and you know no balls that you can get to, and you know play in the right position, throw it to the right bag. 
Uh, you, you can neglect the arm with a uh, good defensive play, and that's definitely what he does. Uh, the, the glove uh, is tremendous with uh, Christian Yelich, and he's doing a great job uh, locking down the left field for us. Uh, me, personally, I think I would like to see him and Ozuna switch to uh, center and left. I'd like to see uh, Ozuna use his arm more in, in the right field than, uh, than what Christian Yelich can do. Um, but like I said, I'm uh, very happy with what I've seen out of Yelich. I got to know him up here with Jacksonville as well. A uh, really great young guy, and uh, he's going to end up winning a batting title one day. And uh, never knew it could be this year. Uh, you know, average keeps up, uh, stay in front of Stanton, and uh, uh, things could be uh, open up wide for him this season. Yeah, I like him. He's a good young player. Uh, he's got speed, and as you say, he's a good outfielder and uh, gets the bat on the ball, and that's what you have mm-hmm. to do, and uh, I, I like him. Uh, so we've got shortstop Hecavaria. I'm sorry if I butchered. <laughs> so I, I love Hetch. Hetch, Hetch of a play with Hetch of a Rhea. I said uh, he's off to a very, very slow start this season uh, with the bat, um, the glove. We all know what he can do, but uh, – I said, uh, I, I expect a, a little bit more out of his bat this season. He had a really good spring training, uh, or, or not really good spring training. Uh, he had moments in the spring that the bat really looked good. Um, so hopefully, uh, he says, hey, you know, we can get the 260, 270, number eight hitter average out of him. Uh, you know, as long as he's uh, keeping balls up from going up the middle and saving runs in games. I can neglect a little bit of bat with him. And uh, finally, uh, Salta Lamakia, uh, always a, a power threat, the catcher. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, not a lot of power so far for the Marlins, though. I see he's leading the team with one home run. So, uh, uh, But with uh, Stanton and Salta Lamakia, I think we uh, expect that Dell's numbers will change quite soon. Yeah, now, now Salty, uh, I've been a little disappointed with uh, even last year with the uh, with the bat with uh, Salto Macchia. Um, the glove and the way he handles our pitching staff, um, he's tremendous. Uh, no complaints there. Just, just wish that bat would come around a little more. Uh, I said I'm definitely uh, liking the, like I said, the new young catcher that we just brought up in Mathis plays, JT Romuto. He's definitely a hitter type uh, catcher. Uh, more than more than defense like Salty is. Uh, so Salty, I uh, said, uh, I know my my uh, my fellow host Andy. He's real big on Salty this year. Thinks he's going to have a tremendous bounce back year. Thought maybe last year he put a little too much pressure on himself coming to Miami and trying to be uh, uh, you know the the, the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, hopefully, uh, like I said we we see some better numbers out of Salty with the bat this season. As long as, but as long as he's handling our pitching staff, um, the the bats, uh, you know, secondary to me. I said up the middle and behind the plate. I, I, I definitely want much better defense than offense. Exactly right. Well, Dan, I want to thank you. Uh, four game set coming up with the Marlins, and I want to thank you for coming on the show. And this is the uh, part where you get to plug whatever you'd like to plug. Oh, well, most definitely, most definitely. And I said, uh, I, I want to thank you so much for uh, letting me come on Mets Musing here. And, uh, you know, like I said, this four-game series, Marlins Mets. And uh, definitely uh, give a shout-out to my co-host, uh, Andrew, the uh, Andy, the uh, the Jose guy. Uh, you can follow him <laughs> at Latino Local 4RWF. And uh, I said uh, the Marlins Family Show itself. You can follow our podcast at Marlins Family on Twitter. At Marlins Family Live on Facebook, we're on the Great Baseball Podcast net channel, which uh, the Mets Musing Show and uh, the MLB This Week is on as well. Really great baseball shows up and down the lineup. Anything you want to hear, uh, Marlins, Phillies, uh, Braves, Mets. Uh, like I said, general baseball. I think y'all even got some Japanese baseball talk <laughs> yeah. on there. So uh, it's really great stuff on BaseballPodcast.net. And like I said. Make sure you follow me um, on Twitter at FSU underscore Dan and uh, the Marlin family at Marlin family. Okay. And thanks again, Dan, for being on. And we'll talk again. 
Thank you so much, and I look forward to having you come come join us on a Marlins show here soon. Okay, anytime, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, and have a blessed day, guys. You too.